In this video, I'm going to explain what a transition dipole moment is. But I will try to look at uh, elementary concepts in spectroscopy. And uh, a spectrum is going to look like this. Uh, here you have the properties of the photon, and here you have the intensity uh, of the spectrum. Now, uh, the idea is that uh, this spectrum might look something like this, right? Uh, so you have regions where you have peaks, uh, sometimes they are sharp. In other regions you have that the absorbance or the intensity is zero. And the question is what controls whether when you have absorbances, so you have a peak here and a peak there, why is it that the peak uh, intensity at this point is much lower than the peak intensity at that point? Uh, notice that this is not controlled by the concentration of the solution because the concentration is the same in this experiment. You're simply analyzing a unique spectrum with the same concentration. So something else has to be responsible for the different, height, different heights of all these peaks. Okay, it turns out that that is related to something that we call the transition uh, dipole moment. So the way to understand this is uh, when a photon comes uh, through a material, okay, notice that uh, the photon is going to be an oscillating electric field with a magnetic field uh, perpendicular to it, right? So there's, uh, there's, there's a change in the field as the photon goes, right? This is kind of a, a change from positive to negative, positive to negative as you go through. Now, the, the molecule has to have something to be able to interact with this oscillating field, right? So, so somehow, there has to be a, a, a dipole in the molecule that is generated while the transition is taking place. Okay, so let's uh, think for a minute about an electronic transition. Okay, so we're going to be uh, promoting an excitation from the 1s orbital to the 2s orbital. Okay, so you have your electron here initially, and then you're going to shine, this is the halogen atom, you're going to be shining now a photon, and uh, the energy of the photon is going to be a resonant with the difference in energy between these two states, so that the resonance condition is satisfied, the question is whether uh, that absorption is going to be intense or not intense. Okay. Well, uh, so the idea is that, uh, again, in this transition where the electron is jumping from the 1s to the 2s orbital, there has to be something in the molecule, there has to be a change, a dipole, in the molecule so that it can interact with the incoming photon that is going to cause the oscillation. Well, for the 1s to 2s orbital, what we can actually do is draw the electronic clouds, right? So that is the electronic cloud of the 1s orbital, and this is one, uh, how the electronic cloud of the 2s orbital looks like. Uh, it's a little larger, and then it has a node in the middle, but that's of, of no importance right here. The important part here is that the electronic distribution in these two orbitals is identical. Notice that you have spherical distribution of electrons, of charge. In the 1s orbital, it's isotropic. You have exactly the same charge distribution in every direction. And for the 2s orbital, you actually have exactly the same. So while the electron is jumping from the 1s to the, to the 2s, there's no dipole, there's no change in the way that the charge is distributed. Right? So what that means actually is because you actually don't have any change in the dipole, a photon that is passing through this molecule is not going to be able to elicit the change of the wave function from the 1s to the 2s orbital. Right? So, so we actually have a, a mathematical model to explain that, which is the transition dipole moment. Okay, the extension coefficient, which is what determines what the height of these peaks is, is related to this uh, transition dipole moment integral, which essentially connects the wave function of the final state, which in this case it will be the 2s, with the wave function of the initial state, which in this case it will be the 1s, uh, with a dipole moment operator. Okay, and you integrate this over space, differential of volume. Uh, again, the idea is that for this transition, this dipole moment uh, 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 integral is going to be zero because there's no dipole uh, 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 taking place, there's no change in the localization of the charge uh, taking place when the transition takes place. However, if we were to change this and uh, put this as a 2p uh, uh, orbital, then we can redraw this, and the idea is as follows, right? We can draw this uh, uh, charge, this orbital on top of the 1s orbital, so now you have transition between uh, uh, an orbital in which the electron is spherically uh, distributed and an orbital in which the electron is not as frequently distributed, you have a lobe-shaped uh, orbital, right? Uh, that would be the 2p orbital. So in this case, there is a change in the distribution of that charge uh, uh, when the transition takes place. That means that there's going to be a dipole originated in the transition within the molecule. And that dipole originated is going to be able to resonate well, it's going to be able to interact with, with, well with this photon, and then the transition will take place, right? So that photon energy can be invested in promoting the electron from the low energy state to the high energy state. Ultimately, uh, when you put here the 2p wave function and here the 2s wave function, then you will have that this integral is not zero. 
and again, the, the exact value of the integral is going to tell you the height of this, uh, of this peak. Ultimately, we're actually not going to do any problem in which we solve explicitly this integral. It's just something that is going to let us uh, uh, to set something that we call the selection rules for the spectroscopies. Right, so uh, this is what we call an allowed transition, uh, but that 1s to 2s is something that we call a forbidden transition because it can take, take place. Right, so a forbidden transition would be one in which the transition dipole moment integral is zero, and an allowed transition is that in which the transition dipole moment integral is not zero. And again, the extension coefficient, how high this transition is going to be, this intensity is going to be, depends on the actual value of that, of that uh, uh, dipole moment integral. Okay, so uh, there's going to be something that we call selection rules that stem directly from um, that integral. Okay, so, so the concept that emerges from this uh, topic is what we call the selection rules. And there's two types of selection rules that we're going to study. Uh, one of them is what we call the gross selection rule, and the other one is what we call the specific selection rule. Okay, so what is the gross selection rule and what is the specific selection rule? The gross uh, selection rule tells you what molecule is going to be able to absorb uh, radiation. So for example, we will see that in infrared spectroscopy, N2, for example, can, uh, doesn't, all of the transition dipole moment is going, is going to be zero. So, so N2 does not absorb photons at all, uh, infrared photons, right? Uh, so that is, again, gross tells you uh, whether the molecule absorbs or not. The specific selection rule tells you if the molecule absorbs, uh, what are the states that you can bridge? So for example, in the case that we were just looking at, the hydrogen atom, okay, so for the hydrogen atom you have here one S uh, orbital, and here you have your two S and your two P's, okay, same energy. Uh, the gross selection rule will be the, well, does the hydrogen atom absorb? And the answer is yes, okay, but the specific selection rule tells you uh, which are the states that you can bridge with the transition. So the specific selection rule is going to be the 1s, the 2s, forbidden, the 1s, the 2p, allowed. Okay, so that is the, uh, the sp an example of a specific selection rule. In that case, for the hydrogen atom, we will say that the specific selection rule for UVB spectroscopy is a change in the angular momentum quantum number of plus minus one. Okay, notice that when you go from the 1s to the 2s, this, the change in the uh, um, uh, angular momentum quantum number is zero. You go from L uh, is equal to zero to L is equal to zero. So, so that's not uh, an allowed transition. But if you go from S to 2P, which we have demonstrated that you create a dipole moment in that transition uh, and it should be allowed, then the transition is allowed. You go from an S to a P orbital, and again, that satisfies the specific selection rules. Okay, so that's uh, all that, I, that uh, we want to know about the transition dipole moment which ultimately controls uh, uh, the height of these peaks and uh, ultimately results in uh, the presence of what we call selection rules for every spectroscopy. Okay, so we will see the selection rules for UVBs, infrared, and NMR, and there's two types of them, the gross selection rule, uh, what molecules absorb that particular radiation, and the specific selection rules. If a molecule absorbs radiation, then what are the states uh, uh, that you're bridging during the transition?